Dave Mann, Behind the Scenes. My name is Chris, aka Lou Bagel, and I have been working on my game Dave Man for over a year now, where Dave is on his repetitive morning quest to get his coffee without having to talk to Chatty Cathy. I thought I would try something new, a kind of behind the scenes, or maybe behind the story would be a more accurate title. Though this is the first behind the scenes episode and my game is very strange, leaving me much to explain, I am actually going to share some new features that I have added in the last couple of days, which are emergency beards and Bio Bob. What are emergency beards? Well, they're actually products in real life. You can find them on Amazon and pardon the tangent here, but if you scroll down to the reviews, you'll find what I believe is the strangest review I have ever seen. So of course I have to allude to that in the game. Why are emergency beards in the game? For my Kickstarter, one of the rewards was to suggest an item. One of the backers, Dinchin, submitted the item Emergency Beards. Dinchin, which you can check out her pixel art on Twitter, at Dinchin's Art. She also assured me that these beards work from her personal experience, though she denied being a bohemian surfer girl. So now I have the fun problem solving challenge of how do I get these fake beards into the game? What would they do? Especially with the fact that Dave already has a beard. And here is where B.O. Bob comes into the picture. But who is B.O. Bob and where does he come from? So B.O. Bob was created for two reasons. One, to give a little variety to the levels and challenge. So Chatty Cathy isn't the only obstacle. Two, because I also realized that I kept marketing my game as Dave trying to avoid annoying coworkers, plural, even though Chatty Cathy was the only coworker to avoid. Um, I did this kind of for brevity and marketing as I didn't want to have to explain who Chatty Cathy was and I just thought more people would universally understand the term annoying coworker. So the brainstorm was on to think of other annoying coworker types. I even have a list of alliteration such as Nasty Nate, Pushy Paul. Of course, there's the well-known Debbie Downer. As a side note, I also had the name Stinky Steve, but I feel that B.O. Bob was a bit better and more fitting. Leave a comment below on which you prefer, or if you come up with any other good alliteration names. Just take a moment, think about your coworkers, in what ways do they suck? Okay, moment over, leave their nickname in the comments. So besides having a silly name, the most important aspect is actually adding a new obstacle. If there are multiple characters chasing Dave around on the map and they only look different, then it isn't adding a new obstacle. The big challenge was how do they act different? What feature or mechanic can they use to add a new obstacle? My first instinct is to go as opposite as possible for complete differentiation. So instead of moving around the map, Beobob Bob can be more stationary. If he is stationary, then he can't be dangerous all the time or else you can never move past him which in this game is a problem since you have to collect the coffee beans around him. So how can he be dangerous sometimes, but not all the time? Well, whether it's helpful or not, the first instinct when someone gets a sweaty armpit is to keep your arm down, thinking no one can smell it. So B.O. Bob can periodically raise up his arm, thus letting a stink cloud out. If Dave gets hit by the stink cloud, he gets knocked out, which of course is far-fetched, but I couldn't think of a better way to end the level and at least I find the cutscene humorous that when you wake back up, Chatty Cathy is right on the scene and already talking to you. So a bit about the programming without getting too intensive. Beal Bob is a state machine. On the start of the layout, each one is randomly given a wait between stinks period of six, seven or eight seconds, just so it doesn't look like they're synchronized swimming out there. When that timer hits, it randomly chooses whether they raise left arm, right arm, or both arms. The state machine is updated and the animation is started. Once the animation is complete, it triggers the next state where the stink cloud starts and the animation is set to scratching his ear or beard or side of the head, whichever your imagination prefers. A timer is also set as the scratching animation is looped, which once that timer hits, it proceeds to the lowering animation, which is actually the raising animation set in reverse. Once that animation is done, the same code triggers the next state. The raising both arms varies just a bit as it is done in all one animation. The events watch what frame it is on to trigger the next state. The stink cloud starts in the armpit, 
So the function has a parameter of left, right, or both to tell it which side to create it on. The animations for the left and right are the same. They're just mirrored. Image points are set on BL Bob for the armpit to tell it where to start. As I don't want players to get upset by a stink cloud that's almost non-existent, knocking them out, the object is given a boolean variable of is dangerous. Where it starts off as false, once it hits the frame where the cloud is big enough, it's flipped true, and then once the cloud starts to break up and dissipate, it's turned false again. Next, I had to set the border box on all the frames where the stink cloud is dangerous. Due to the perspective, I give it more of a buffer at the top so it doesn't look like the cloud barely touches feet and causes him to collapse. And I increase the buffer a bit more all around just to allow for some dramatic escapes. After testing, it does seem kind of hard to hit the cloud as you have to get a direct hit where the time frame and the size is kind of small. But the instinct to wait for the cloud to pass does add to the obstacle, especially if a chatty Cathy is right on your tail. So now that Beal Bob is all set up, how do those emergency beards tie in? Well, you probably noticed that Beal Bob has a beard. You may have also thought, why isn't chatty Cathy stopping to talk to Beal Bob? Well, therein lies the solution to the problem solving of how to implement the beards. In the lore of the game, Beal Bob is the one employee that chatty Cathy doesn't want to talk to. So I have her say, oh, hi, Bob, as she passes him, as it wouldn't seem like her to say nothing. Kind of like Kelly in the office when she's mad at Jim and Pam says something like, have you ever seen her to say less than three words or three sentences? I can't remember. So a polite hello in this context is essentially saying, I can't stand you. Get away from me. So when you find Dinchin in the office, as she backed at the tier high enough to get her own NPC, she is wearing an emergency beard because why not? She said she owns them in her life, which it kind of seems like she looks like a one bit Jesus here, but that was not my intention. I just slapped a emergency beard over the previously drawn NPC of Dinchin, which in the cutscene she does take off to reveal her face to Dave, then proceeds to give him the website of where he can get one from and then slaps it back on her face. So if you go home and buy it online, once it arrives, it's in your level power-up inventory. When used in the level, you put a beard on, yes, over the top of your own beard. And then when Chatty Cathy passes by, instead of being game over, she simply says the same, oh hi Bob, that she says when she passes Bob. When wearing your beard, you cannot move though. Of course, realistically, you could move around with a fake beard on, but there's a few reasons I did it this way. One is I can't just let the player be invincible walking around the entire level. I could have put a timer on it where it only lasts for so long and wears off, but that doesn't seem realistic either. But one of the main reasons is there are actually several other power-ups that are on timers as they only last for a certain amount of time, then they wear off. This one is more unique as it lasts as long as you want it to, but you can't do anything while you wear it. It also fondly reminds me of the Tanuki Mario, my favorite Mario suit. And I also find it more comedic this way and also that Beobob Bob is stationary, so it seems logical for you to be stationary while impersonating him. The implementing of the mechanic was fairly simple. Dave stops from moving, starts the animation. I gave Dave a Boolean variable of inbeard. Once the animation reaches a certain frame, the Boolean is switched true. Then I added a check of the collision with Kate. I also had to add to the controls input function to check if Dave is in beard to signal the sequence for Dave to remove his beard, which is basically the complete opposite logic for him putting it on. And that is basically it on Beal Bob's and emergency beards. Like I said, I've been implementing this the last couple of days, so there's still maybe some more possibilities or testing. I also have been playing around today with seeing how many bobs I can take on. So we will see if any new ideas come up from these features. I enjoyed making this video, but it actually does take quite a long time to put together, gathering the clips and video editing. So if you really enjoyed this or are a fellow indie developer yourself and found this helpful in some way, please leave a comment on what parts you liked or found interesting because when I am deciding whether to make another video like this or similar, the time commitment is a big deterrent. So if not many people see this or enjoy it, I'm not sure if I'll make another one. 
But thanks for watching. Development on Dave Man has been going great this month, but I'm still not certain on the release date quite yet. If you have any questions about Dave Man as a fan or future player, or as a fellow developer or artist, please feel free to ask me anything in the comments below. Have a great one. Lou Bagel out.